Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern OpenGL series. In this lesson, we're going to look at a special library called the GLM library. And this stands for the GL Mathematics Library. It's a free open source library that's going to let you do a lot of the things that we need to do in computer graphics, like working with vectors, matrices, quaternions, and some of the other mathematics that we're going to need in this series. Now, you're welcome to use your own math library if you'd like, but GLM happens to be a really nice library to use. And let's go ahead and look at why. So here's the web page for OpenGL Mathematics, and you can go ahead and do a Google search for GLM Math Library. You'll go ahead and see it's usually the second link here to get to the website, and then we're gonna visit the GitHub library shortly to see this. Now on this page, what you're gonna see here is that this is for specifically OpenGL Mathematics, though I'm sure you could use this with other APIs as well, but that's where the name comes from for GL Mathematics. And why we like this library, if you read the description here, I'll go ahead and just zoom in a little bit more, is because it's really related to GLSL, the GL shading language that we've been looking at in this series. And what that means is that the function names, for instance, are the same as this math library. Things are, for instance, when we get into matrix uh, multiplication and these sort of operations that we're going to need to do for transformations, column ordered, and so on. So the defaults sort of align nicely with GLSL. So it's just sort of one less thing that you have to keep track of. All right, so with that said, let's just go ahead and get started with this library. Let's get things set up so that you'll be able to start using GLM. And I wanna actually practice a little bit going through the documentation so you'll be able to learn things without uh, having to search for lots of tutorials and just know how to navigate the doc uh, documentation. So with that said, let's go ahead to that GitHub page here. I'm just gonna go ahead to the code here. I'm gonna download the zip file here and just give me a moment to open this up. And once you've got the zip file in a directory that you want, go ahead and just extract the contents within that directory. And you'll go ahead and see we have the GLM library here. And just exploring this, you'll see that we have everything in the repository. Okay, now let's go ahead and just take a look at this page here on the GitHub to see how we can get started. So if you scroll down here, you'll go ahead and see it has most of the same opening as the website here. So we can go ahead and see that. And again, we can see that this library is supported on a wide variety of compilers and using modern C++. That's C++11, which we use in this series, uh, as well as my other YouTube series. So you can go ahead and see that. So let's go ahead and just start with this basic example here and see how we can use the library here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just copy this example here. And let's just make sure that we have things set up and make sure that we're able to create a project where we can include the correct files here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into my episode directory here. Let's go ahead and go ahead and create a source file here. I'll just go ahead and call it main. And let's just go ahead and paste in our example from the GLM page here. So I'm just going to go ahead and resize things a little bit just so it looks a little bit nicer. I think this will do here. And there we are. Okay, so here's our actual project here. Now again, let's just go ahead and try to compile this and see if it runs. So I'll run G++. We want to use some modern version of C++. So usually I'm using 20 these days. Our main file and output. And of course, we are going to get the no file or directory found here. So again, looking at our directory structure here within GLM master, let's just go ahead and take a look at that. We have the other folder that we extracted, and then we have uh, our particular files. So anytime that you install some library, you're usually going to want to see some of the examples and how they're used. So we have this sort of simple example here, and we'll actually look at some of the tests so we can learn how to use this library as well. But you can go ahead and see that this GLM folder, it looks like that's going to be our root here. So sometimes I like to just explore these things here just a little bit to see if I can kind of match up and see, okay, is there VEC3 HPP here? And I can indeed see that that file is there. So I have some idea that that's the folder that we want to include. Okay, so if I go ahead back here, let's just go ahead and take a look at this path. So for us, it's going to be this include path from our current directory. And let's just go ahead and go back here and go back. Now, just to clean up this project a little bit, and I'll use the uh, GUI just to make it a little bit easier on you. Um, I usually just like to uh, extract these contents here, or actually probably leave them in GLM master here. Uh, let me go ahead and paste this here, delete this empty folder. And then usually what I do whenever I download some other library that I haven't created is just call it third party, or you could sort of you know move these as 
around as you like, but that's sort of the idea. So it makes it a little bit easier just to know how I have uh, included things. So again, here's my uh, current uh, structure here. And what I want to do here, again, if I list out what's in the third party, I have GLM master and then this GLM page. So let's go ahead and retry our compile here um, just with a little bit of this uh, new structure. So I'll go up here and I want to include dot slash third party, third party and GLM master. And let's just go ahead and hit enter here. And looks like we are almost ready to go from our sample where we have this um, project here. And anytime, of course, you're getting this undefined reference to main just means, well, we need somewhere to start our code here. Int main and just return zero. And that's it. OK, so now if we go ahead and compile, we'll go ahead and see that we are set up with GLM and we can include anything that's in the GLM library. OK, so that's it. If you want to go ahead and stop this video because you are pretty familiar with libraries, then you're welcome to. But let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the examples in the library and kind of navigating from the help page here. Now, we can already see from some of these examples how to use a decent amount of the actual functionality. So we've got matrices, which we're going to need to learn about, and VEC3s, for instance. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this and maybe start with something uh, relatively simple here. And let's just go ahead and uh, simplify this just a little bit. And I'm just going to clean up the uh, comments so that they're on a different uh, line here. All right, so I've just cleaned things up there quickly with a little bit of magic from video editing. And let's go ahead and explore this page a little bit. Now, one way that we can go ahead and try to learn any library like this is from the source code. So usually we can go ahead and take a look, say, at the test library, if there are test uh, libraries or functions uh, or unit tests available, and kind of poke around here. So that is one way that I can do this. I like to personally use tools like grep. So for instance, let's just go ahead and uh, navigate into third party here, our GLM master, and then into the test directory just to make our greps a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to grep around for, say, VEC3. And let's just go ahead and see um, what kind of examples that we can find here. And things are in the GLM namespace, so that'll help you also just search for functions as opposed to files and comments where VEC3 might come up. So we can see that we get quite a few um, different examples here. And the reason I'm showing you this way or this strategy here is it can be useful just to see the different contexts in which, say, a vector three is used. Because, for instance, in GLM, it's a very heavily templated library. So for those who have done a lot of C++ programming, that'll be uh, pretty meaningful. But you can go ahead and see, you know, just how GLM's being used here. We're pushing things back into a vector. It looks like this is a way to construct a vector three. All the values are initialized to one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're using vec three as a type for different colors here. And it looks like we even have something um, for integer vectors here. Here's ivec3. So again, just a few things to be aware of. And this is, again, one way that you can sort of search around and try to figure out how the uh, actual library is working. OK, so let me just go ahead and back out of that. And let's go ahead and go into our documentation and look at some other functions in GLM. And to do that, let's go ahead to the web page. And towards the top on the left here, we have the API documentation. We also have a manual here. And the manual is pretty useful if you uh, download this. It's also got a bunch of um, useful, let's go ahead and load up a few more pages here, um, examples of just how to use the library, some of the functions um, that are available, and just you know some more code examples. Uh, OK, so anyways, let's go ahead and look at the API here. Now, one that I think might be useful might be to know about if there's a uh, dot product function. So let's go ahead and search this. Um, let's go ahead into the API documentation. And now let's go ahead and try that search here. So for dot, for instance, there we go, it's showing up a little bit better. Uh, this would be for dot product. And you can again see that we have two different overloads. Uh, so I'm going to do the one that has to do with vector. Let's go ahead and click on that so we can see dot here and uh, how it's used here. Now, again, this name is looking a little bit scary because of all the um, template uh, magic that's going on here. So 
let's just go ahead and see how to read sort of this vec here parameter here. And I promise it's not as scary and there's all sorts of overloads, but we've got a vec here and it looks like the parameter would be between one and four for the uh, vector here. So vec one, two, or let's say we're interested in three for now. Uh, the type so it looks like the types of vectors that we have in the GLM library are things like integer vectors, floating point vectors, and so on. And then the Q here, well, it doesn't seem to be uh, labeling it here, but we could probably look at the uh, template to see what that is. I'm not sure if that's the actual, um, um, how to say, uh, it's the qualifier. Um, so it's not labeled down here. A quick search if we look at the actual qualifier for Q. Um, we can actually do things like the precision, for instance, whether we want a really highly precise floating point value, medium or low. Uh, I believe that's what that is here um, for our uh, particular type. So that's how we read this. And again, th there's going to be overloads or, or rather what this evaluates to is just um, using, um, you know, GLM VEC3 as the um, uh, name here. All right. So that's the idea. Let's go ahead and um, figure out how to use this here. Um, so this uh, dot function here. So let's go ahead and uh, keep it up here. We'll go ahead and just try glm dot. It's a function uh, call here, and we need two vectors to compute the dot product of. So let's go ahead and give ourselves uh, two vectors here and just keep everything uh, in view. And we're going to say vector three, uh, and we'll just call this a. Initialize it with a float here. And let's just go ahead and do another one here. Um, I don't know, something like 0 0.5. And let's take the dot product of vectors A and vectors B. And let's go ahead and see what it uh, returns for us. So it returns the dot product of X and Y. So this should be some sort of scalar value here. That's a float. And let's go ahead and see what we get here. So we've got to recompile our uh, project. Let's go ahead and see if this uh, works here. Oops, got to go back one more directory. Recompile, it runs. And let's go ahead and see what our result is. We're going to do a C out. A dot of A, B is. And let's just go ahead and put the uh, value here with an end line. And just make this a little bit bigger so folks can see. And rerun. And oops, of course, need IO stream. And let's just go ahead and see what our result is. Well, it looks like our dot product is 1.5. Okay, so if you know what dot product is, it's taking each of the individual components the, of the X here and the Y here. And it's giving us 1 times 0.5 plus 1 times 0.5 plus 1 times 0.5. So this looks like it works here. Okay. So again, why am I showing you this? Well, this is just to, again, sort of show you how to, you know, peek around or poke at some uh, functions here. But let's go just a little bit further here. Now let's go ahead and see something that we might want to actually do here. Now let's look at another function here that we'll probably want. And that's to maybe normalize our values here. So it looks like we have a normalized function. And let's look at the one that Again, uh, sorry, this is as big as it'll zoom here. Uh, click on uh, normalize here. So this function here, and it takes in a vector. So let's go ahead and use this. And let's normalize our vectors. A and B. Normalize. Make sure I spelled right. And let's go ahead and just put everything on one line. So it's a little bit easier to see. And let's go ahead and reevaluate, rerun. And well, these vectors are already, apparently these are normalized. So let's go ahead and maybe choose some more interesting numbers here. Um, let's go ahead and do something like uh, 12, uh, 2.0 and 1.5. Go ahead and rebuild this, rerun it. And again, we could go ahead and see that, well, the dot product again is going to give us a value of one here. All right, so that's the idea here. Now let's go ahead and look at a few other functions here. Let's go ahead and create a mat four for a matrix four. Let's go ahead and rebuild this. And let's go ahead and see what's actually in that matrix. So we have a handy way of printing out that actual uh, matrix here. We have a two string function here. Let's go ahead and see if it works with what we've got here. And usually we just call it something like mat four. 
something of that uh, nature. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, print that out here. Now I might need to include some other uh, functionality here, but let's just go ahead and see. And yeah, it looks like it's, um, oh, just a little uh, typo again with my typing today. And actually, let's give it a better uh, name here because it might get, uh, well, I guess that's that's okay. I'm just going to call it uh, Matt here for short, just to avoid any naming collisions as I'm doing this. And yeah, it looks like we are missing something. So it is complaining about this. So let's go ahead and see if we have to string and where that exists in our documentation. And it looks like it's here to string. And it's saying, okay, so we know that this is going to take in uh, some GLM matrix uh, vector or matrix typed variable. Uh, and well, where are we actually finding this? Well, it's in the GLM uh, string cast header. So let's go ahead and include this. And I'll have to go into my uh, files here. And again, when we find some uh, useful functionality here, we want to do include uh, this GLM string cast function. And let's go ahead and rebuild that now. And let's go ahead and print it out. And maybe if I make this terminal a little bit bigger, uh, we can see that this is actually a uh, matrix four by four. And it prints it out uh, as such. And you can see along the diagonals R1, which is our identity matrix. Now, unfortunately, this isn't formatted with spaces. Maybe there's another way to do it in GLM. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, I want to actually uh, try this um, printout here with our uh, vectors A and B as well, um, just to show you something. So let's go ahead and do um, A here and uh, B as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at their values. And if I run this, I can see that here's vector two, here's vector three. So you'll notice that the normalize function um, isn't actually modifying anything uh, when we're using it for our uh, dot product. So let's go ahead and see um, how that works here. Uh, when we do GLM, uh, oops, let's go ahead and do uh, here, GLM normalize A and GLM normalize uh, B. And let's see what those results are when we print this out now. Then you can actually see the uh, normalized form of each of these vectors. So the example that I've chosen here uh, where these vectors, and, and we're going to have to talk a little bit about what a vector is in future lessons, um, their, their lengths are, or rather their these vectors are sort of moving in the same direction. They're just different uh, lengths here. So something that we can do just to make things a little bit more interesting here with our VEC3 is to say, okay, let's actually specify all three of the dimensions here. So let's actually do one here. And again, I'm usually being pretty careful to specify the F after the number because we want to work with uh, floats here. Uh, let's actually try uh, this one here, 0.5F, uh, 1.0F. Um, and 0.0f, something like that here. Okay, so now if I run this example, it'll be a little bit more interesting as far as what the dot product's giving us. Again, we can see the vectors that are printed out here. Um, they're what they are when they're normalized, meaning they're a unit length here. And then of course, our matrix is unchanged here. Okay, so just some different examples um, that we can see here. Now, the GLM library is pretty useful, again, as far as some other basic functionality that we have here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, just show you a few more of the, I guess, things that we can do that are going to be familiar with us to uh, GLSL here. Let's go ahead and just print out, and I'll go ahead and do it after here. Uh, actually, let me do it uh, up here just to give us a little bit of room, and I'll go ahead and break this up by one more line. Uh, what I want to do is just print out um, to string, uh, let's just do a and I'll do dot x. So let's go ahead and see if that works here. And we can go ahead and see if I scroll up a little bit. Well, the first component is one here. Uh, so again, with our vectors, we can sort of access them. Now let's see if we can do the sort of swizzling uh, that we could do in GLSL. Like if I do a dot x, y, z here. Uh, well, it looks like uh, there is no way to do this, uh, or is there? Well, if we go ahead and look at the documentation, um, we can actually add in, and I'll put this uh, at the top here, 
uh, let's go ahead and put define um, GLM uh, for swizzle if I want, or just GLM uh, swizzle. Let's try it a little less uh, strong here. Let's see if it finds a uh, member for it here. Uh, so now I'm getting a whole bunch of errors here on this expansion. Uh, I believe I need to include just the uh, GLM header. Let's see if this gets us as far as we uh, need here. Uh, let's try that. And we're getting a little bit further. All right, so uh, what do we need to do at this point? Well, go to the documentation. Again, I'm just kind of showing you how I learned these things. Uh, so if I type in GLM swizzle, just so you uh, know how to do this, here's our advanced usage page. And again, we want to be able to do things like um, setting uh, these different vectors to each other. So let's see, we tried swizzle, the header here. Um, and it looks like that's partially enabling things here. Uh, so let's go ahead and add uh, swizzle for x, y, z, w here. And again, because vectors are going to be overloaded for things like color, we're using RGBA, or for texture coordinates with STQP uh, uh, often. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, start with this. Uh, let's see if we can actually get this working and uh, match the example, because I think it's just a handy feature uh, to have here. So I have to find it. Let's go ahead and see if that works here. Again, just getting a little bit closer um, each time here. Let me actually try to read some of these errors uh, and see what we're doing here. Ah, I think it just doesn't like uh, printing this out here, <laughs> which actually might have been the problem the whole time. Um, so let's see if we can. Um, I believe this will just treat it as a new vector, giving us the X, Y, and Z. So I think I can treat it as a string. Let's see if that works. Nope, not quite. Um, but I think I can, uh, uh, let's just print out A here. Let's just go ahead and see if I can use on A. A dot X, Y, Z equals B dot Z, Y, X. Let's go ahead and try something like that and see if that works. Uh, oh, not quite. Let me try to just add in um, both of the swizzles here. And it's still not happy. Oh, GLM swizzle is deprecated. Use GLM for swizzle instead. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and do for swizzle. And I'll get rid of this here. And let's go ahead and see if that gets us what we need. Almost. Okay. And let's go ahead and try uh, one or two more things here. Um, let me go ahead and see. I think this will work. Um, depends on the uh, compiler yes yeah, so it's saying I forgot might have forgotten the uh, qualifier here um, I'm not sure if this is going to do the assignment like I'd like in uh, GLSL uh, okay so there it is uh, happy here so now let's go ahead and uh, print this out um, and we can go ahead and see let's see what did we assign uh, XYZ to well it's going to be B dot Z Y uh, X here let's go ahead and see if it actually made that change so I don't think it's actually making a uh, preserving uh, change here or actually doing anything with it, uh, which is kind of interesting. But let's go ahead and just uh, see what it prints us out. Let's just try something like print out YZ here. So I'll get rid of that here. And now we should actually see, well, just the Y and Z components here. So depending on your compiler, you may or may not need the parentheses. I'm actually curious. Uh, I just want to do one more sort of live experiment here. Uh, let's try this with Clang and see if it works here. Uh, and I don't have a newer uh, version of Clang, so I can try, I think, 17. Yeah, so this one's still going to want the parentheses as well. So again, use your compiler. Um, I'm leaving the errors and I'm going to leave the errors in this video because I think they're useful. Uh, the other things I want to show you in GLM uh, that you can do, you can do this sort of dynamic swizzling at runtime, um, which might be a little bit more flexible. I think this is something closer that you want to be doing again, right? If you're, this is actually showing you, um, you know, L values and R values and um, doing some uh, reassignment here. Let's see, BGRA2. Uh, just kind of swizzling things around here. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting um, stuff that you can uh, do here. I think the main time that I'm using this actual type of feature in GLM is just to get, you know, X, Y, and Z or whatever. Um, so make sure that uh, if you're using the newer GLM, you're doing for swizzle. If you have an older one, um, you, uh, I think, can just use GL swizzle here. Uh, let's see if that 
solve things. Yeah, I guess we didn't need the uh, extra stuff here. Um, so we can actually just run it as is. All right. So one other feature that I have to also show you uh, whenever we're doing math, because we're going to be using it um, probably more so actually on the uh, GLSL side, but occasionally for things like camera, if we want to produce a uh, third vector, so VEC3, let's call it C, uh, and that's going to be the cross product, okay? Something that gives us a parallel, uh, or excuse me, a, a third vector that is perpendicular to the two other uh, vectors here. So I just want to go ahead and search cross prod, let's see here, product, and I believe it's just cross. So again, this is how you'd use documentation. Try some searches here. And we've got a variety of different things here. So cross product is defined for a few uh, dimensions. Two and three here, I believe, um, is what it de uh, defines here. Um, I believe uh, those are the only ones that we're really going to use in graphics. And then I think you can do a cross product of five or seven dimensions or something like that. And, and that's it. Um, or at least that's all I've seen. Um, so anyways, cross uh, as it looks here. Let's go ahead and just try it out. So GLM cross of A and B. And let's go ahead and print that out and give ourselves a little bit of help here just to print this out. GLM to string C. And I'll go ahead and end it right there. And let's go ahead and compile. Let's go ahead and run. And you can see what the cross product is, a vector that's perpendicular to both A and B. Now the order does matter here, so be careful. That'll be a common bug uh, later when we learn a little bit about the mathematics, but just something useful. Alrighty, folks, so I think this video is getting long enough and we have um, done enough interesting stuff with GLM as far as looking at how to add some extra functionality, things like swizzling, including some of the different headers here to give us different functionality, and even having a little bit of a debug tool here like toString that can help us uh, see what our actual values are when we start using vectors and matrices. And I'll try to do some more examples later on as we learn a little bit of math here so that we can Again, revisit some of these functions either in the context of a separate lesson or within the context of uh, OpenGL. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was useful just to explore a little bit in the GLM, see me make some mistakes and as I fix them. Again, GLM is a pretty solid library. I know a lot of folks who use it and it does have even more power for doing some of these operations using SIMD intrinsics. You can play around with the uh, precision levels and so on if you'd like different performance. So uh, keep that in mind or if you'd like a specific lesson on those types of things, um, I'll consider it. At some point, I do want to do a math sort of library or building one from scratch or, or doing maybe a math course or these types of things. So if those are things you're interested in, let me know. And I'd look forward to uh, building those lessons. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson in this series. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And we'll see you soon, folks.